Helen E. here at the MMA Lab. Always great to be joined by the one and only, the killer gorilla, Mr. Jared Cannonier. Now, first off, congratulations on your performance of the night win over Derek Brunson. And next, it's the title shot against Izzy. That's right. Um, that's what I'm hoping for, you know, and that's what uh, the universe and uh, the UFC, you know, the guys, the UFC and my management is all telling me. So it's uh, essentially a go from here. So it's a training camp for the champ. Absolutely. And speaking of that fight against Izzy, I mean, I love the mutual respect between you two. And I know that he's been having his eye on you for quite some time. So when that fight does happen, which I've heard him say maybe in the summertime, June, July, um, how do you anticipate that fight playing out? Um, hmm. It's really hard to say right now. All I know, without giving up too much of my game plan, um, all I know is that it's going to be very competitive, more competitive than any other fights that he's had in the octagon. Um, I'm sure it's going to be the same thing, same for me, but I'm going to anticipate less um, um, just answering any of the questions that he's going to present to me, um, answering them with uh, ferocity and, and um, I don't know, any of, the, any of those pretty words we can add to it. But um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like... He's going to have to change his approach, that's for sure. It's not going to be, you know, he's not going to be style bending in there, you know, because I plan on um, neutralizing his game and imposing mine, like I do with any and everybody. You fought in three different weight divisions, so you fought some of the best out there, no doubt, including the UFC light heavyweight champion, Glover Teixeira. So with that being said, when you look at Izzy's skill set, how do you kind of rank his skill set amongst those that you fought? Um, he's definitely the best striker I've ever fought, you know, um, in the UFC or in general. You know, um, I can arguably say he's better than any of the strikers I have here at the lab um, on paper. But, you know, as for our hearts and our minds, when we apply it to this sport, we are uh, definitely going to be more than prepared for anything he's going to present to us. Um, and in comparing him to any of my other um, – Component, uh, components, opponents. He's definitely, um, like I said, the better, the best striker that I've uh, come against. But he's not, he's not going to be the the guy who's going to try to impose a fight with wrestling. He's not going to be able to, to uh, lean on his wrestling more so because most guys when they come in there and fight me, it's not really. It's, they feel the pressure on the feet, so they resort to their wrestling. I don't think he's going to be um, inclined to do that. So it's going to be interesting to watch. For me, it's going to be very interesting to fight a fighter who's not going to be looking to take me down to gain an advantage in that regard or what they used to think was their advantage, but it's not, you know, so that it is what it is, you know. And I know all the fans are really looking forward to that fight, but has there been any offer, like any paperwork yet? There's no paperwork, just uh, essentially just verbal reassurance on my for, for me. Um I got word from my manager who is in constant communications with the UFC brass, uh, matchmaking and all that other stuff. So um, <clears throat> on top of that, you know, it's first round management. Those guys get the job done. You know, as long as I get my job done, they get their job done. So I'm expecting a title shot. That's what I'm preparing for. Um, that's what I'm creating up in here and in my heart. That's what I'm manifesting in my reality. So um, it's a title shot for me. And um, God forbid, if it's not, I'm just going to break whoever's in front of me and, and punch that uh, ticket again. Definitely. And there's always so much going on in your division. 185, Sean Strickland, he's about to fight Alex Pereira. First off, what do you make of Alex Pereira and that matchup? Uh, we got another kickboxer in the midst, right? Uh, another guy who's going to keep it on the feet, you know, Um <clears throat> And he's working with Glover, the champ, who's going to definitely give him that, give him the looks for those guys who want to shoot on him and things like that. Um, so I mean, so far, so good. I'm impressed. I mean, I've been I've been watching him, of course. I've been seeing him. He's he's uh, called me out in his last fight, um, reaching for the stars, if you will. <laughs> um, you know, more power to him. Uh, but as far as my uh, trajectory, what I'm looking at, I'm looking ahead. You know, that's looking way back. Um, and, uh, you know, if, as long as he keeps doing what he's doing, we may most definitely potentially meet in the future. 
and Luke Rockhold, it looks like he's trying to call out Paulo Costa, and they're kind of going back and forth. I mean, Paulo's pretty active on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen, but do you think that matchup should be made? I definitely think that's a good matchup. Those two guys um, a very good clash of styles and personalities as far as, you know, UFC fandom goes. Um, <clears throat> but that's a good fight in general. Those are two really big um, middleweights, athletes. Um, Rockhold has all that experience. He's fought with the best of the best. Um, most people would say he's on the down, down end, uh, the uh, whatever. The decline? Yeah, the, the decline of his career. Um, I personally feel that anybody can, who is uh, who is training, who's got a mind for it, is capable of getting there and making it happen. So with that being said, I'm not going to count him out against Costa, who is an animal. But, who, you know, who's coming off of his title run, who wants to get another one? Um, and those guys are jaw-jacking on the Internet. So, you know, that makes for uh, entertaining TV. Definitely. And speaking of entertainment and great fights and great fighters, this past weekend, someone who's fought at 185, Hamzat Chemaev, mm -hmm. he beat Gilbert Burns. Curious to get your thoughts on Hamzat's rise so far. You know, he uh, he did his thing, right? Uh, he got in there with the number two ranked, you know, uh, uh, was it welterweight? Yeah. Um, Gilbert, Byrne, Gilbert Burns, who I'm a big fan of. I got a lot of respect for him. I love him. And, you know, uh, I like watching him fight. I like watching everybody from his team fight. I love the energy that they bring to the octagon. And I knew that it was going to be a good fight. I knew Gilbert wasn't going to be uh, easy to get out of there. You know, on top of that, he's going to present problems, which he definitely did, especially in, in the uh, striking aspect um, and in the grappling aspect. I can't really recall <laughs> the grappling exchanges. Too much. I had to go back and watch that fight again. But um, it was very competitive, a very fun fight to watch. It was good to see um, Hamzat go through that uh, fire, if you will, and come out, you know, with the same energy and the same vigor that he's had going in. So, um, um, yeah, man, I guess the guy's riding high right now, as he should be. And especially after beating Gilbert, puts him in a position to um, fight for that title at welterweight. So um, he's doing good down there. How do you think he would do moving up to middleweight? Because I know he's expressed interest, too, in mm -hmm. obviously fighting middleweight, and he's fought Gerald Mearshart as well. All right, now we're talking a different uh, perspective here. Now when we're talking about him coming to middleweight, now you're putting him in my crosshairs, if you will, because um, I watch everybody in, at middleweight as a competitor, not as a um, – as a fan or somebody who's watching somebody to learn something from. So in that regard, you know, when he, if he comes out, he can definitely uh, do some damage up here. Um, as long as he uh, stays from stays out of my face, you know, uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be the same thing what I do with everybody. You know, it doesn't matter what you present to me. You got to deal with what I present to you. Um, I can definitely deal with anything anybody can present to me. You know, I'm fighting for the title next. So that's my that's my primary goal. What Izzy presents, um, but I know with my mind and my body, I can deal with anybody in the world. Definitely, and I know all the fans see that as well. Now, lastly, in a couple weeks, the UFC pay per view will be here in Arizona, and that main event, Justin Gaethje versus Charles Oliveira. How do you see that fight playing out? Ooh, that's a good fight. Oh. Uh, how do I see it playing out? It's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a banger. You know, Gaethje goes in there, and he's uh, always willing to slug it out with anybody. Um, he's got some of the best defensive wrestling in the world, and it complements his striking so very well. So it's always fun watching him go in there and go to work. And Oliveira, I mean, I mean, what hasn't been said about him? I mean, he's, he's, shown, I mean, he's shown he's one of the best on the ground, if not the best on the ground. Um, <clears throat> And he's showing that he's uh, getting even better to the very best of the, of the guys on, on the feet. So um, it can go either way, you know. It can go either way. I know it's going to be super exciting. That's for damn sure. Yes, just like your fight against Izzy. Hopefully we'll see that in the summertime. Yep. But for all the fans who can't wait to watch you go and fight for that title, what would you like to let them know? Um. To the fans who can't wait to watch me fight for the title, um, I mean, there's nothing much I can do except for tell you guys to hang on tight and uh, trust that it will be a competitive match. 
I will bring it to this man. I will do to him the same thing I plan on doing to anybody in the octagon. And we will see what he what he has planned for it. Um, I'm always looking for better ways to implement my game plan and get the win. So um, don't expect to see the same thing you saw last time. Expect to see something way better.